While Kuro Games doesn't like to put out live streams, they do like to put out dev notes. And today's dev notes is no exception. They have their 1.4 special dev notes section, I guess. Uh, I almost said special live stream, but they don't have a live stream that they do a lot of the times. But we do have the 1.4 uh one basically all the stuff that's going to be coming and i'm very excited to see what that's going to entail because i've heard a lot of stuff on twitter about it so before we get into that you know make sure you hit that like comment subscribe button down below and don't forget to check out the ever wonderful gamer subs use code tystra for 10 percent off y'all i'm just saying gamer subs has been fantastic to me look at the stonewash shirt it's like super nice you got the logo right here for gamer subs looking pretty sick and you probably noticed that my uh, area has kind of changed a little bit. It's a little bit more roomier in the back. Uh, I actually cleaned up a bunch of stuff. I had to. I got a new desk. Uh, it's a little bit uh, smaller than what I was hoping for, but it works. It does work, and that's what I need it for. I need it to work. So, but yeah, we got all that stuff going on. So let me go ahead and take a swing at my gamer sauce real quick. Ah, so delicious. And let's go ahead and dive into these dev notes. Like, like I said before, I have not looked into these dev notes. So this is all brand new to me. We're going to go through paragraph by paragraph, right? All right. So dear Rovers, thank you for your continued support for Weathering Waves. With version 1.4, when the night knocks just around the corner, it's time for another installment of Weathering Waves developer message. In this update, we're adding new gameplay elements, an exciting new feature, and optimizations to enhance your experience. Now. They're going to talk about the characters as well, I'm pretty sure, through this. Um, but we already know who the characters are going to be, and it's going to be the five-star resonator known as Camellia, which everybody's super excited for, including myself. Like, God forbid, I just wanted to chain me up, man. And then, of course, we got the four-star resonator known as Lumi. So I'm pretty sure we'll be talking about them here in just a moment, but let's go ahead and first talk about the new gameplay element or mechanism known as Dream Link. Dreamlink is the new combat mechanism that will be introduced in the main event of version 1.4. Dreamlink enhances the synergy between your resonators, allowing them to unlock their true potential together. When certain conditions align during combat, Dreamlink will activate, dramatically amplifying the team's combat prowess. So it looks like it's going to be kind of a, um, you know, tag team uh, thing going on. And I'm guessing it's going to consist of like... You use your uh, Echo or something, and then the other two use, like, ultimates of some sort. So I'm pretty excited for that. I think it's a great way to do more damage um, because there are some of the events that I'm having a little bit of trouble of, and that's only because of the fact that not a lot of my resonators are built to peak perfection. Um, I'm getting better at it <laughs> because I was just kind of, like, doing all willy-nilly. I found out a bunch of stuff for me. But I digress. New mechanics are always welcome. I think that it's really, really cool. And so long as you introduce it in a way that makes it very easy to understand, I have no problems with it. So having this mechanic could be really, really good. Now, of course, we also got this, which is called Overdrive Combat Elusive Sprint, uh, which in the main event of version 1.4, you could pick up the White Cat's Blessings and enter the Elusive Sprint state that increases your movement speed. Now, it looks like this is just going to be... I don't know if it's going to be part of an event only or if it's going to be in the overworld itself. But it looks like it might just be the overworld itself, and that's pretty crazy. Uh, Lumia Resonator, who will make her debut in the new version, has a similar ability. When certain requirements are met, instead of dodging, Lumi dashes out of to get out of harm's way and is capable of attacking enemies while moving at high speed. So let's take a look at what Lumi can do here. That's actually kind of pretty cool. You can see the little, like, speed step that she has. So... I think that's cool. I think that's pretty dope. And then I want to know, is that part of her abilities? The little like hedgehog thing that's right there? I don't know. These two new game mechanics will be available in the main event of version 1.4. Once the main event concludes, it will be added as a permanent event where the same gameplay mechanics will still be available. Okay, so it's going to be part of a event. So yeah, I think it's cool to have these two new mechanics as an event. Um... I was hoping the Dream Link would kind of, like, span between all the different events. So, um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just looking into it differently. But this, I kind of figured, was going to be its own event. The Elusive Sprint doesn't seem like a mechanic that would stay in the overworld. So, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the new features. Weapon Cosmetics! Weapon Projection. With version 1.4, we're introducing the exciting new customization 
feature, Weapon Projections. This feature lets you transform the appearance of your weapon without affecting their stats, allowing you to create a look that's entirely of your own. I like being able to customize stuff about your resonator, so this is already kind of huge for me because I dig it, but it's going to be dependent on how we acquire these costumes. Are they going to be super overly priced like Genshin Impact's costumes, or are we like what's going to happen? Participation in the main event of version 1.4 to obtain a free weapon projection associated with the event featured four star weapon. Okay. Additionally, we will be adding transparent weapon projections available for all five star weapon types, and you could use the transparent weapon projection to turn the equipped weapon completely or partially invisible. Okay. That's kind of cool. Like you could do an invis invisible blade type of deal. We hope these new options let you add even more personality to your uh, resonator's looks, whether you're exploring or capturing moments in photos. Okay. Uh, participation in version 1.4's Depths of Elusive Realm to obtain the complete set of trans... Okay, so you have to just... You have to beat Elusive Realm to get all the weapon projections for the five stars. That makes sense. Equip a transparent weapon projection to make rectifiers and gauntlets completely invisible or turn swords, broad blades, or pistols partially transparent. I think that's pretty cool. Again, having like, this is kind of what the screen looks like. And I dig that. I'm guessing that the purple here. Yeah, that's the projection. Okay. So the blue is their normal. I'm, or maybe not. That's two different projections for the same sword. Okay. It's got a little kitty paw. That's adorable. Like, I, I like it. I like weapon skins. I think it's pretty cool. I've always liked weapon skins since when I first started playing Call of Duty back in the day. Weapon skins were always super, super dope. So, gaming experience optimizations. All right, we're about halfway through these notes. So, uh, leveling related optimization, double reward, step by step echo upgrade. Okay, let's talk about this. To enhance your long term gaming experience, version 1.4 will introduce a series of leveling related optimizations as part of an ongoing project. Okay, so this is gonna be a continuous project. That's pretty cool. I dig that because honestly, it's hard to level up. It costs a lot of materials, all that stuff. In this update, you'll be able to fast travel directly to the location of any tacit suppression or boss challenge via the map. Thank you. I was so sick and tired of teleporting to a freaking like pillar that was like 50 yards away. Like it's it's very minuscule, right? It's not that big a deal, but I think it's huge in the sense of like, now we can actually instantly transport to the areas that we need to get to. Or teleporter waypoints, which means that when we get to future maps, it makes it easier to, to get to those as well. I dig it. Additionally, you have an option to spend double the waypoints to earn double rewards upon completing the forgery uh, simulation and tacit suppression challenge. We also improved the display of results screens, giving you a clearer view of the rewards you earn. Okay, so it looks like you don't need, and I quote, you don't need to craft a condensed resin, looking at you Genshin, to do double the rewards. That's huge. That's really big. It makes it a lot easier for me to get through my dailies. Now, granted, I'm gonna say this, Weathering Waves. Like, I love these optimizations so far, and I think this is a good optimization, but don't get to where you don't want people playing. Like, add more stuff with this. Like, yes, it's cool that it's gonna take less time for me to use my daily res, or not resin, but uh, daily, uh, what's it called? Wave plates, right? It's cool that I'm gonna have less time to do my daily wave plates, but don't make it seem like I don't wanna play your game. I wanna play your game. I love playing your game, but don't don't do too much to where you're making me log off you know what i mean it's like okay i already did all my stuff so i hope with this edition it gives us events that will take a little bit longer and i know that people might disagree with me on this but when i like a game i like to play it i love to have reasons to play it as well and this is one of those times where i'm like hopefully my reasons to play it continue weathering waves is a great game i don't i don't care what anybody says i love weathering waves so Last but not least, in version 1.4, you can conveniently upgrade an Echo to the exact levels that unlock new substats, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25, through the auto-select settings. We hope this change can improve your Echo upgrade experience and efficiency. Now, what I want to know specifically is that, is it, is it going to be to where, like, okay, so for me, like, we already have it to where there's no cap. 
And I know that people could be like, oh, well, I only want to level up this certain amount. I want no cap, so I'm going to keep on... Keep it, keep it with the no cap, right? So, I'm going to keep with that. But what I want to know is this right here. It says Echo EXP items and Echoes. Does that mean we can start using Echoes to level up our other Echoes? Because that should just be a thing regardless. So, if it is a thing, that's going to be great. Um, we'll see. Now, uh, interface related optimizations, weight, weight plate info pop up echo info pop-up and tower of adversity interface adjustments starting in version 1.4 whenever you log into the game you'll receive a pop-up displaying the amount of weight plates and weight plate crystals you own okay that's pretty cool because sometimes for me i don't know what how many weight plates i have uh so i kind of dig that change um the displayed information for newly absorbed echoes will also be optimized upon op uh absorption the echo sonata effect category will be displayed along with the main set and subset thank you that's huge bro that is huge you can tell that that's a glacio set main stat defense thank you sweet merciful god this is absolutely awesome this needed to happen so this makes my echo grinding that much better so thank you kuro games for that all right, in the current version, adjusting your team lineup in the Tower of Adversity requires leveling and re-entering, which we know can interrupt your gameplay experience. To improve this, we optimize the interface in the uh, upcoming version, allowing you to view and adjust your teams directly within the tower. Apart from the above, more optimizations are in the pipeline, along with more gameplay elements and features. Please stay tuned. Okay, so basically leveling in Tower of, uh, tower of Adversity is really cool. So it looks like 1.4 in general is going to be a really, really fun uh version i'm very excited for 1.4 because again we get camellia which is a very very big fan favorite character including a favorite of mine like god damn like <clears throat> you know you, you, I, I i could go into details but um overall i think that weathering waves is in a good spot where it's catering to the fans that actually care about the product and i know a lot of people and it's gonna be about a video that i talk about a little bit later where they're like, oh, well, Wuthering Waves is dying. It's not. It's not even close to dying. But people like to meme. People like to say that stuff. And it gets annoying. But overall, Wuthering Waves is in a very, very good spot. I'm very excited for what's to come in version 1.4. I want to know the events itself. Um, and I want to know what's coming for 1.5 too. So we should, in theory, be getting some uh, drip marketing for the version 1.5 characters. I'm very pumped to see who they're going to be. Um, but let me know in the comments down below if you're excited for version 1.4 of Weather and Waves. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and to check out Gamer Subs. Again, use code TICER for 10% off, y'all. I'm just saying, I rep this brand. I love this brand because it's a fantastic brand to be a part of. And they care about not only the creators, but you guys out there as well. So, cheers to Gamer Subs. But yeah, with that in mind, y'all, that's going to be it. Love you to death. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Please take care be safe.